Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 41, Preparing a Research Plan. Now this is the first vlog in our series about how to write journal articles. And we've started here via request as always. A lot of you contacted me when you heard we were going to do this series on journal articles and he said, look Tara, can you start right at the beginning of the process? And you are right. Most of the research literature in this field begins way too late on journal titles, journal selection, refereeing the writing of an abstract. And we really do need to start much earlier about how we have an idea and how we transform that idea into a journal article via a research plan. And that's what we're doing today. And so what I'm going to say to you is, there's a lot of conversations about research activity with PhD students, and there should be. But we also need to recognise a fact. And that fact is two-thirds of PhD students at any time during a three-year candidature do not have any research that is published. Two thirds of you. So don't sit at home and say, oh, I've got no research and all the people around me have refereed articles. Guys and gals, the point of a PhD is to develop your career. The point of a PhD is to render you research active. This PhD or research masters provides the foundation for the entirety of your career. At the conclusion of a PhD, you should have 5 to 10, 12 refereed articles produced from the PhD and or a book. Also, it is really important that you get your priorities right. The completion of the PhD is your most important task. If you haven't finished that PhD, then you're not going to be shortlisted for a job. Remember, we talked about this in an earlier vlog. The first cut I make when I'm shortlisting for a post is, does someone have a PhD or not? And the gunner, coulda, shoulda finish a PhD doesn't cut it at all. You are not shortlisted. Similarly, you need to complete the PhD as quickly as you can to render you internationally competitive. If I have a student that finished it in three years and a student that finished it in four and a half years, you tell me which one I'm going to shortlist. So the PhD must be the priority and always the priority. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't produce an array of outstanding refereed articles, book chapters and journalism on the way through. And so what I'm going to do in this session is provide you with some tips and some tricks that will allow you to be research active during your candidature, but also ensure that you finish that PhD in the minimum time. So this first session therefore starts with planning. So basically what I'm interested in today is how we can figure, how we find a discrete idea that has momentum, that has energy and propulsion to enable a journal article and indeed further research. So that's our task today. I'm starting right at the very beginning. How you have an idea and how that idea becomes an article. This is a really, really important skill. And the articles that you're going to write in the next couple of years will be nested in your PhD. And that's absolutely fine. They should be nested in your PhD. But the skills that I'm teaching you about research planning today, you will use for the rest of your academic and professional research career. So I developed the strategy I'm about to share with you during the first month of my PhD candidature. So when I arrived in a PhD, I thought, I need a plan. I need to work out what's going on. And so the plan that I'm about to show you now, 27,000 years later, I actually developed in the January of my first year of enrolment in a PhD. And look, it has been a pretty successful career. My 20th book, is about to be published this year, 2017, and I've published over 200 refereed articles. And 90% of those have been singly authored. So I haven't ridden on the coattails of anybody else, taken anybody else's ideas and just added my name to it. These are my pieces that I have slogged through and written and gone through refereeing and published. I've also produced 
plenty of book chapters and more journalism articles than I can count. So the plan is working. It's also important to recognize that I've never had a sabbatical and most of you will never have a sabbatical in your entire academic career. Universities have transformed radically guys. It's not about the nice sabbatical, the six months off to write a book, all that stuff's gone. I've spent the bulk of my career as a teaching research academic. That's been my contract and in leadership roles like I am at the moment where not one minute of a day is available for my personal research. So therefore my research times are early in the morning, late at night and any time I can pinch from a weekend. So as you can see for me, planning is everything. So this first session on research planning, I'm going to show you how I've done it since the first month of my PhD candidature, while also I'm using the academic literature on research planning. And you need to note, guys, the, tr the trend, the trajectory in the research planning literature at the moment is trying to stretch you to a three-year plan. And that's a really great idea, but we're going to start now with a one-year plan, and you'll see how the momentum from that one-year plan can lead to a two-year plan and then a three-year plan. So thank you for joining me in my home office. So I'm sitting on the floor of my home office. It is January 1, 2017, and I do this every January 1 of every single year. I sit on the floor uh, with my whiteboard in my home office. Just this year, for some reason, there's a camera in front of my face but I'm doing what I do every single year on this day. There is a cliche that if you fail to plan then you plan to fail and at the start of every year I write myself a research schedule and a plan of what I want to accomplish during this year for my research. So my first stage and this is literally how I do it is I grab a large bit of paper like this one. I make myself a cup of coffee and I put this very large piece of paper on my office desk and I simply start to write down the ideas that I think may be refereed articles or other types of pieces through the year. Now this will be very easy for you to do because all the things that you're going to put on this piece of paper are nested in your PhD. So don't do too much outlier stuff at all. Do stuff that's nested in the doctorate. So as your career progresses, you'll start to pull in new and innovative ideas to compose this big white bit of paper. So before we get into the PhD that you're doing right now and the relationship between the ideas and the PhD and what you're gonna put on this big white piece of paper, I need to go back a little bit. We've got a lot of students who are about to join us who have come from an honours program or have come from a coursework or indeed a research master's background. So the first task in thinking of an idea that you're going to put on that big bit of paper is look at your previous qualifications. Look at your previous dissertations. Look at your previous coursework assignments and assess whether or not something can be data mined from those earlier pieces of research. So for example, I produced two refereed articles from my coursework master's dissertation, but six articles from the coursework subject assignments. My first research master's had three articles that came from it. My second research master's had four refereed articles from it and a book. My first graduate diploma had six refereed articles that came out of it, and the one I just finished, the graduate diploma I just finished, has three refereed articles that have been produced from it, and one more that's about to be published this year. So as you can see, start to think about your prior qualifications. That's how you get the easy ideas and the easy articles. So the first stage of research planning is take stock of what you have already done. Think about the prior qualifications and ascertain if anything can be data mined from them. It might be a whole assignment, it might be 4,000 words. Look at what is available. Now for you, that could be quite a list. That could be five or 10 refereed articles in and of itself. And the vlogs that will follow will show you how to move that idea into different types 
of refereed article. But what I want you to do today is think about those subjects, those topics, those ideas. Don't judge them and simply add them to the big white bit of paper. Keep doing that until every possible option is exhausted. Okay, so that's the first stage. Think about your prior research, honours, masters, even really interesting undergraduate capstone work as well. We're now going to move from your prior enrolment to your current enrolment. We're looking at your research masters or your PhD. So let's start with the easy stuff. So from your perspective, have a look at the really straightforward stuff that often happens in the early stages of a PhD. The easy stuff like the literature review or the easy stuff like the research methods chapter. Now, the overwhelming majority of those two types of chapters are dreadful and boring and banal. Sorry, but they just are. They're really, really dull. And I would argue as a genre or oeuvre, they're getting worse. But still, if you look at your research framework, particularly your methods or your literature review, ascertain if there's anything there that could be published. If you've got a systematic review that seems to be going incredibly well, then think about whether or not that can be published, and that's great. Have a go at that. Conversely, also, as we've talked about, I've seen some very, very strong literature reviews in really innovative areas that have been published as short books as part of the Springer briefs or the Springer shorts, these little tiny books of 25,000 words in length. So do consider that as well. Think about your methods chapter. Was, a bit, was it a bit pedestrian? Was it a bit basic? Or have you done something revelatory? Also remember, you may not be publishing the whole literature review or the whole methods chapter. There may be 4,000 words of it that is incisive, passionate, pointed and important. Grab those 4,000 words, flesh it out into six or 7,000 words and you've got a really innovative piece. So remember, don't judge yourself at this point. Just come up with the idea and put it on the big white bit of paper. So once we've gone through your current research portfolio looking for the big idea. So we've done prior research, we've done your current research, now we're going to move to your talks. I made you all have a promise to me last year, if you remember. Every single talk you deliver at every conference or every seminar or every presentation, every talk I want you to write up into the refereed literature. So on your big bit of white paper, make sure that every single talk you delivered in 2016 and every single talk you're programmed to deliver in 2017 is listed here to write up as a refereed article. Right, prior research projects, current research projects, talks. You've done that, great. The other area I want you to consider when we're coming up with these ideas for possible journal articles is your teaching. Now many of you, and it was my experience when I was a research master's student and also a PhD student before I got my first big job in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we are all contract sessional tutors and teachers. We teach in universities around the world sessional by the lecture, by the tutorial, by the seminar. Now the first thing I would say to you is never let anybody underestimate your value. Teaching is a gift to the planet. Teaching allows you to enable and support the next generation of scholars. Nothing we will ever do, nothing we will ever do is more important than the teaching that we do. Full stop. But you know as well as I do that in the course of a semester there will be one, two or three absolutely astounding lectures that you deliver that take a little bit more time, you've researched them really well and they're really edgy. They're cutting edge knowledge, really fabulous. Now what I want you to do is write those sessions up for me. So if you've done those really powerful lectures, please write that up into the refereed literature and you will be amazed the energy, the propulsion, the vibe that research is like when it's published if it's come from teaching. So never underplay the teaching to research connection. Some of the best work you will ever produce will have that particular trajectory. But also andragogy. If you've done something really innovative in your classroom, then write about that innovation. Write about the curriculum. Write about the teaching and the learning activities. Write about your innovations in the use of educational technology. Never underestimate teaching-led research 
or learning-led research. Incredibly important contributions to our fields, to our disciplines, come from learning-led research. So on your big bit of white paper, list some of the pieces that you're thinking could be a great idea from teaching. So the final strategy to help you think of these ideas to put on your big bit of paper comes from the contemporary events in the world. Look about you. There may be policy interventions in science policy, in arts policy. Think about politics. So depending on your research area, there may be something that you are doing that speaks directly to a contemporary issue. So slice 4,000 words off your PhD and graft that to a contemporary policy intervention. And you've got yourself a really important article. So as you can see, you can end up with a fair amount of stuff on this big white bit of paper. These are the ideas you're going to deploy. This is an important bit of paper. So we've done this. All the ideas we've come up with are on this bit of paper. Great. Now I'm going to put the piece of paper down and we're going to move to the whiteboard. And now you can use butcher's paper. You can use a series of digital apps if you like. All of that's terrific. But I've owned this whiteboard <laughs> since I did my PhD. I bought it in December to start my PhD in January. And as you can see, when it arrived in Adelaide, got a couple of cracks for the first time. So my whiteboard's more cream and a bit tired and emotional, but it has been with me around the world through so many amazing experiences. So the reason I use a whiteboard like this is this is positioned in my office. And every morning I wake up, I get myself a cup of coffee and I sit down to start writing in my office. I see this. This is my plan. It's a physical thing that stands there and goes, Tara, this is what you're meant to be doing this year. But it's also a dynamic board. That's why it's a whiteboard. So as I start to have successes, you'll see they start to move through categories. And I'll explain what we're going to do here. So we're going to translate the ideas that you came up with here onto this whiteboard. So let me show you. We have a whiteboard and it's separated, as you can see, into three categories. So the first thing you do is put two really big lines that actually separate the bits of the whiteboard. And I'll explain what each of these three sections are. The top is 2017, the pieces to be written. They've come straight from this sheet and I've written them down. These are the pieces that I am going to write this year. These are the ideas. As you can see, they're just put in terms of subject or topic, nothing big. That's come straight from the piece of paper. The middle is the pieces that are under review. So they are the pieces I wrote last year that are currently pending, that are somewhere through the refereeing process. And the bottom is published in 2017, published in 2017. So the pieces that were accepted pretty late last year that will be published this year. So to be written, under review and published. So the goal through these three categories is to move your pieces down the board, okay? We've just created these ideas. We need to start to move them down the board and down the categories. Now you'll notice in January, and it's January 1, in January, the whiteboard is pretty top heavy. It's got the stuff that's gonna, coulda, shoulda, the stuff that is going to be written. Now I've been demanding of myself, I always am demanding of myself, and I ask that you be demanding of yourself too. You need to be ambitious. That's how you're successful, demand something of yourself. But the goal, guys, is to have it here, nice heavy board in January, and then it's a bottom heavy board in December. So stuff moves down the board through the year. Can I say, I also replicate this on my CV. So at any particular point, if people want to give me a consultancy job or are looking to hire me for a different job, they say, well, what is she doing right now? On my CV, I actually have a category, pieces being written, pieces under review, and of course, 
2017, the pieces that are going to be published. So what you're seeing here is also on the CV. So it's very important in terms of research planning. So the pieces on the top are the pieces to be written. You'll see all the speeches that I delivered last year that I've yet to write up. The speeches I'm delivering this year are there to be written up. The pieces that I'm writing with Leanne, hi Leanne, and Steve in our book, Moving On Up, all of those are there, as is the book. But also my big project, my 3D librarian project, my digital literacies project are there. You can see I've also given myself the target of 10 pieces of journalism to write. Journalism is not refereed, so that's why that goes straight down. I've already written and had accepted two pieces of journalism. So I always have journalism on the board as well and give myself a target. Now, you'll also see one other category here, which is quite interesting. Remember I talked about that political, you know, if there's something politically happening on the planet you'd like to contribute. Well, there's one piece there that I'm writing with Sonny, hi Sonny, and Steve on Trump, and we're calling it the University of Trumpland. And it very much is focused on what's happening in contemporary politics at the moment and neoliberalism and learning. So that piece is also there. In this top category, there are four pieces that are within a day each of being sent out to referees. So in the next two weeks, four of those are going to move down the category. So you can see all of this is incredibly dynamic. The goal is to keep creating movement in your research life, movement in your research culture. It also means every single one of you at any particular point will have a research plan and yes, for you, this plan will be strongly tethered to your PhD, but this plan will also provide a strategy for you to transcend your PhD and move to the next stage of your career. So remember, the basis of this table moves into next year's table and the year after and the year after, because some of these will be there in December, some of these will be there in December to publish in 2018. So the board is continually moving. The goal team is to keep moving between the categories. Keep writing, keep stuff moving. Don't judge yourself, just believe in the momentum of your research career. So what we need to do is make sure you're getting as much as you can out of every single moment you spend writing a talk, doing teaching. So from here, once you've constructed this list to be written, under review and published, we're now going to, in the next series of vlogs, move to how to actually construct a journal article from here, where to publish that research, how to manage referee reports, and yes, how to promote your research after it has been published. What I would say to you in January, January 1, 2017, is ideas are everything. We are scholars. Ideas matter. Ideas fuel the planet. And through a really strong research plan, ideas can be sent out into the world and can make a difference. So together this year, we are going to make a difference. And as always, I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.